Hey everyone, welcome again to Code with Scala. In this particular video, we'll be talking about how can you send HTML and JSON data as a response in your Express application. So, so far in this series, we have seen introduction to Express, we have seen a little bit about HTTP request, a little bit about routing, right? Uh, about middlewares and how can you use middlewares, right? In this particular video, we'll be looking at how can you send HTML and JSON data in your Express application as a response. So let's get started with it. So first thing that I want to do is I'll just go into this app.js file and basically we'll be working with this code only in this uh, particular uh, uh, lecture. So basically I'll pin this uh, code, I'll push this code to my repository so you can uh, later refer to this, right? And I'll pin that repository in the description. So I've basically copied uh, this much code that we have done in our previous lecture into this file, HTML and JSON file. So we'll be working with the same code. So here I'll be making some changes. I just want to make sure that uh, we have every concept in separate files so that you can refer all those code data, right? All right, so let's get started. So let me just first go and run this particular server, right? So what I will do is I'll just uh, uh, go over here and I will say known mod. Uh, the file's name is html.json.js. So let's run this and the port is running on 8000. So I'll go into my browser. I'll just go to localhost 8000. That's right. So here we are. Basically, localhost 8000, it says login to move forward, right? It's a little minimized. Let me just zoom it for you. So here we are, login to move forward. Right. So now what we can do over here is that we want to send HTML data as a response, right? So what I mean by HTML data is that suppose we have one element over here. Just for example, we have this element. So I'll just say h1 and inside this particular h1, we have I am the login page. Right? So this is the data that we want to send. So it's pretty simple actually. What you have to just do is you just have to pick this whole HTML data up and you just have to send this here, right? Inside a string, yeah. You'll have to send this inside a string. So I'll just use single quotes and I'll just send the whole HTML data inside this, the whole element H1. Now when I will go back to the server and now when I will refresh this, you will see that this has become H1, right? So you can see that this is basically uh, this particular heading has all the characteristics of what uh, H1 has, right? So we can make this H2 also. So if I go back to my code and I try to make this H2, let's go back and let's refresh this. So now you see it becomes a little small, right? So this is how you can send HTML data to your response. But what if you have multiple lines of HTML? Right. Here, if you see that you have only single line of HTML, you have just one single element. You're sending it to uh, the send method and it is basically sending the response back. Pretty simple. But what if you have one more line, right? Suppose that what if you have one more H2 with you? So let me just copy this again. And let's say that you have one more another line. You have H1 and you have to just say, this is login page two, right? So how can you send multiple lines? So one solution that uh, maybe that is coming to your mind is that we can just copy this, we can paste this, right? And we can just change the data inside the element, the HTML element that this should work. But let's go back and see that if it is working or not. So if I refresh this page, this isn't working. This isn't totally working. And if I go back to my file and if I try to open uh, the node, the server. So you see that I have been served with an error, right? And that error is basically cannot set headers after they are sent to the client. So basically what this error basically means is this send method is the last method that this get method will execute, right? So after sending this uh, data, it will not send any more data, right? So now the question is, how can we send multiple HTML lines, right? If this send method is going to be executed only once, so for that, we have one more method that is right. So you can use this right method and this right method will actually send multiple lines of code at once, right? Let's just go back and let's rephrase this again. 
okay so this is loading let me just go back and check what we have missed okay so there was no particular issue it was just taking a little time because my network was a little slow right so basically what we have done is we have just replaced the send method with the write method and now you can see that uh, both of these uh, h1 are here right i'm the login page and the login page let me just make this as login page 2 right just i'm changing a little text over here and let me just refresh this all right so we have i'm the login page and i'm the login page 2 but notice one thing over here this server is still loading right what is it loading it's still waiting for some data to come because whenever we are using the write method, the server always expects more data to come, right? It's, it doesn't stop automatically. So what we have to do is we just have to use what? The send method, yes. But this time we won't be sending any data over here because we have already sent the response that we wanted to send, right? So now what we can do is we can just call this like this. So this will basically end the request, the total request and the complete response will come to you now. So now if we go back, you see that the loading has stopped and we have both the data with us. Right. So this is the way you can send your HTML data, your HTML data as a response. Right. Now you must be thinking that if we have a whole website that is created in HTML, what we'll be doing? We uh, Do we have to uh, take each and every HTML code, each and every HTML line and we have to uh, basically use the right method, send every line and, that, and that's how we'll be able to uh, uh, see our HTML file? Not exactly. So we have a different method for that and we'll be looking at that a little later. So first, let's jump into JSON data. now. So how can we send JSON data? So for that, we'll be using our profile page, right? So uh, let me just uh, see that if uh, we are able to authenticate or not. So if I see that, I will have to just change my password for uh, five, six, seven, right? This is the password and this password will match and the name is over here the name is over here right so we'll be able to uh, log past the profile page right so let's go and let's uh, request for the profile page Bridge. so this is basically our profile page and in this page uh, what we want to experiment is we want to experiment with some json data so as we have sent the html data over here you see that we have sent the html data and we are successful in doing that now in this profile section, what we'll be doing is we'll be sending some JSON data. What is JSON? JSON is JavaScript object notation, right? It is basically a way to represent data in key value pair, right? You must be knowing about JSON. If you don't know about JSON, I will strongly recommend you to please go and read about it a little, right? All right, so this is basically JavaScript object notation, which uh, itself states that uh, it will be like a JavaScript object and it stores data in key value pair, right? So let me just show you how it is done. So I'm just creating an object over here. I'll just give first name as my first key and I'll just pass a value. Let's just say I pass Tony over here and uh, I'll just take my second name, basically last name, and I'll just pass Stark over here, right? So Tony Stark. So this is basically the response I want to send and I have basically sent this as an object. So this will basically be treated as a JSON object, right? So let's go back and let's see that if we are able to get this JSON object over here or not. Let me just rewrite this page. Now you see first name Tony, last name Stark. So we are basically getting a JSON object now. Not only this, what we can do over here is we can create an array of objects, right? So you must know about the array of objects. This is also included in JSON. So what I will do is I'll just create one array over here. So this basically is an array. I'll just take this object and I'll put this inside this array. So this is my first element now. And similarly, what I can do is I can create multiple objects like this now. So first name and last name. So let me just change the value. And again, first name, last name. Let me just uh, have one more object and let me just change the values. Something like that, right? So let me just format this. So you see response.json, we are sending an array of objects. First object is of Tony Stark, first name, last name, the keys are the same. 
the values will be different, right? As your JSON is. This is basically your JSON. But let me just refresh this again. And now you see that you have a whole area of objects. So basically you have a complete JSON data, right? So here you basically see your JSON data, right? But we can use another method also, right? So we are basically using response.send. So there's a specific method that actually allows you to send JSON data only, right? So it will check everything, right? It is just a more secure method to send your JSON data. That is just a response.json. That's it, right? You will be getting the same output. You will be getting the same output, but it is more secure, right? It is more secure. It actually works with uh, JSON well, right? So let's just refresh this page and this output will not change, right? And now we can go to the network tab, right? So let's go to the network tab. Let's refresh this and let's see that what responses have we got. So let's refresh this. And now you can see that we are in the profile page. We are getting the status of 304 and uh, let's uh, check for more stuff. So now you can see that uh, this basically is. So if we go down, so let's just go down. Response. So this is basically our response as and you're getting this as complete JSON data, right? So this is how you can get. So now you can also see that you have your array. Your array's first element is Tony Stark. Uh, second element is uh, Basically, index first index is T Rogers, second index is Blue Man, and like that. Right? So, this is how basically what you can do is you can send your HTML data and you can send your JSON data. Right? So, let's go to the code once more. Right? So, basically, the main difference uh, between uh, using uh, response.json and response.send is that response.json will convert anything that you will pass over here to json format right whether it will be a null whether it will be undefined right you will send you can send basically anything uh, inside this and that will be converted into a json format right you just have to make sure the syntax is right right and uh, then basically the, this is basically the uh, use of response.json you can also use response.send but using response.json is more safer right for basically uh, to send a res uh, json response right so uh, this is how basically we can send HTML data and JSON data to our response in any of our Express application. So I hope you like this video. Uh, if you like this video, do subscribe to our channel, give us a thumbs up, like this video, share this video, and we are coming with more and more awesome content in the future, right? So in the next video, we'll be talking about if you have a website, if you have basically multiple lines of HTML code, how can you actually send that as a response, right? So see you on that video. Till then, bye-bye, take care.